Today I want to look at Airbnb alternatives. I am a longtime fan of Airbnb's brand. I am a longtime customer. I use it all the time. I think they've done an amazing job with brand marketing. Uh, they've even recently attributed a lot of their success to their new focus on brand marketing or renewed focus on brand marketing. It has its faults, but I've always loved the emphasis that Airbnb puts on brand. I honestly think it's one of the things that has helped it get through a lot of its controversies and still keep a very loyal audience base. It doesn't offer a ton of coupons and discounts. I mean, hosts can offer discounts, but Airbnb isn't constantly like pushing marketing emails at you. It doesn't have a loyalty program, but you still have people using it over and over. But today is not about Airbnb's brand. I want to look at Airbnb alternatives and how they position themselves in relation to Airbnb or how they position themselves differently. It seems like none of them have really caught on, which is interesting. I don't know if it's just because of market dominance, but I thought it would be interesting to look at them. I would say the closest one that people think of as VRBO or I don't, I don't even know if that's how you say it, VR, verb, Verbo. First up is one that's pretty regional, but I became aware of it during the pandemic. I think they became quite popular. It's called Red Cottage. It functions in upstate New York. And when I first came across it, it was notable because it was all these like cute little cozy cottages. It wasn't necessarily like design forward, but it definitely felt curated. I remember when I first came across it, it like didn't really have much of a brand. It just had like cute homes. Their site definitely is more up to date now. So it opens with this hero video showing these really cool properties upstate. Their value propositioning here is curated homes, exceptional service, brilliant amenities. The leader since 2007, so they've been around a while, in thoughtful, well-designed homestays across the Northeast. From rustic lodges to modernist escapes, explore exceptional homes with unparalleled access to the best that our region has to offer. So basically just putting an emphasis on the beautiful homes. They're when you think about Airbnb, for a while there, they were going more with an emphasis on like being a local in different cities. So this one's more about getting away to these beautiful homes, which makes sense because they probably are targeting people who live in New York or Boston or in the Northeast. They're not necessarily saying like travel all the way here. It's probably more about these escapes or long weekends from the city. They do have some curation here with on the water, family friendly poolside retreats. They are bucketing homes into different categories. It definitely feels higher end, but not like too luxury. It feels very like, I don't want to say coastal elite, but there's this group of people that one of my clients used once called Henry, high earning, not rich yet, which is basically people with good taste that maybe live in cities and are buying borough couches and eating at sweet green. It has that sans serif font. These homes look like they're maybe furnished from like West Elm. A lot of like cute and cozy cottages. They have this cute little illustration of the cottage that they repeat. It feels a little retro. It reminds me of like old drawings from like the 50s. I think it's supposed to imply like you're going to this simple, natural escape. On their about page, the first thing you see is we build our name on exceptional customer service. So I think they're trying to play up that they've been around a while, they're high touch. Here they have their functional benefits, why book Red Cottage curated homes, exceptional service. They're really going with like purely functional benefits. I'm a big fan of hero copy on websites being more around placing the customer as the hero based on uh, Donald Miller is building a story brand. This one's very like functional benefits, curated homes, exceptional service versus they maybe it would be like um, an, es an escape from the city you'll always remember or something like that, more of the emotional benefit that the customer is getting from using your product. When you look at the properties pages, it's fun because they have like a little description, stylish retreat with a pool, bright and airy cat skills which I guess that Airbnb does as well, but I feel like these ones are a little more curated, probably by the Red Cottage team, Chic and Private near Rhinebeck. I'd be curious who writes these descriptions, if they have a copywriter who does it or if the host does it. Uh, it's quite like real estate language. Like when you go on a real estate site and you read home listings, it's a bit like that. Like comfortable bedrooms, kitchen is a delightful space, sleek finishes, idyllic haven. It definitely feels like in that like real estate space. On Instagram, they're playing around a little bit more with the voice and the captions, head over pause for all of our dog friendly homes. They're definitely playing around a bit more, but to me it's a bit of an inconsistent voice with what's on the site, which is a little bit more formal. Let's look at Sonder. Right away I see that Sonder is leading with a little bit more 
of an emotional value proposition, a better way to stay. I would say that they're trying to target people who have maybe used Airbnb and are used to it, or people who are regular hotel bookers, but they're trying to position themselves as an alternative, uh, something new, something that's probably addressing some of the issues people had with using Airbnb or hotels. Underneath that, they have something more functional, inspiring, award-winning design meets modern mobile-first service. Welcome to the future of hospitality. So definitely trying to present themselves as modern. I mean, they use the word modern. Design meets mobile first service. You can see that they are positioning themselves between Airbnb and hotels. If they were just positioning themselves against Airbnb, I think that would look a little bit different. A world of choice from a room for a night for a loft for as long as you like. There's a sauna for every occasion. They are trying to say we are short term like hotels or long term like you think of an Airbnb as being. They're putting things a little more in this like modern technological lens. They have a big focus on their app, 24 seven customer service, neighborhood guides. Oh yeah, so here, hotel amenities without hotel formality. So. Again, not necessarily just positioning themselves against Airbnb, but against hotels as well. Let's look at their blog called Sonder Journal. They are trying to spotlight different tastemakers, Sonder Sounds in Boston, music. So definitely aiming for this like 20 something, 30 something traveler who probably has a higher budget, but it's not like the high end luxury. Oh, this is interesting. They have a blog post with their creative producer about their photography style. Our new creative concept is based on the principles of editorial, visual storytelling, narrative, visually impactful, and honest. Imagery that's not only informative, but evocative and inspirational. So they're going beyond what a typical like Airbnb or even the Red Cottage photos were, where it's like purely like, here's the beautiful house and here's what you're getting by trying to situate it with like a little bit more of an editorial lens. Connecting viewers not only with the space, but also with the experience of staying in a center. So they are bringing more of a brand approach. Really stay out from static hotel and real estate photography you see online. Let's look at what some of those photos might look like. They use more prop styling, like here are these slippers, there's water, they have like their luggage there. I don't think it's like super life styling. I would say they basically just added prop styling and making it look like you just came in the room and this is your stay. The door is open, there's a magazine on the bed. It's like you can situate yourself in there. The tone of voice is interesting. It's kind of like a friend meets escapist. Pack your sunscreen and surfboards. It's just one block from Laguna Beach. Sip a drink on the terrace. It's BYOB or lounge poolside with your favorite book. It's almost like an old travel agent. They give some recommendations for nearby bars and restaurants. Say hello to the breezy California lifestyle. So it definitely has a little bit more of a personality and tone of voice than those real estate listings that were in Red Cottage. Yeah, if we look at another one, it says, transport you back to old Hollywood. Catch a beautiful Pacific sunset from the roof. It's your stay for relaxation. So they're definitely trying to, similar to the photos, like situate you within the room and the place and you're like, ooh, I can imagine myself being there versus, oh, it has this like design kitchen. Not so much like a feature of like the design of the room, but more so situating yourself within it. On Instagram, at least, there are a lot more like short and quippy and to the point. It's a very similar brand approach to like Away, the suitcases. And Twitter, say hello to our newest Sonder in Denver, buzzing restaurants, contemporary art galleries, cute boutiques. They're definitely trying to play up the neighborhoods a little bit more, where you're staying, what it would be like to stay there. Maybe it's also because their properties are quite consistent in interior design, whereas Red Cottage and even Airbnb, you are staying at certain houses because they look the way they are and they look quite different from each other. With Sonder, it's like pretty consistent interior design, so, they probably don't feel the need to play up that as much because you can see that really easily in the photos. And I think if you probably stay in a Sonder in LA, it's probably very similar to a Sonder in New York to a Sonder in Denver versus if they play up the neighborhoods, those are other reasons to stay with them. Now let's look at the most popular one, at least anecdotally for me, from what I hear people actually using, which is VRBO. Not sure if that's how you say it. It's been around for a long time as well. When you land on their site, it says, find your place for together. Interesting. <laughs> I get what they're saying. Find your place for together. Like, find the place where you're gonna spend time together, right? But it's a bit, we hear you. It's a bit, I want to go to there. Like, it doesn't roll off the tongue. You have to like think about it for a second. Maybe that's the point though, is that you have to think about it for a second. It stops you. They are trying to orient it around your emotional value proposition, which is what I was talking about, as putting the customer as the hero. When you see that, you're like, oh, I do want to find my, <laughs> I don't know, find your place for together. I don't love that. 
Sorry to whoever wrote it. I think it could get across easier <laughs> in a way that rolls off the tongue better. But I understand what they're trying to do. I'm guessing that this is more in around families because they have this whole section, get inspired for a family trip on the beach, pets welcome, more than three bedrooms versus the other ones would have had like these different buckets and one would be families, but the others would be like design led, cool neighborhoods, has a pool. They were definitely aiming at like maybe city living 20, 30 somethings. This one feels like it's aimed more towards family. Maybe this changes though, depending on time of year. And this is just there for now. Oh, this is funny. I was talking about how Airbnb doesn't have a loyalty program and here they have introducing one key, the first loyalty program from a major vacation rental platform. But here there are functional benefits our peace of mind, all the privacy of home, more for less, a place for everyone. I think those are nice, but maybe any company could say that. I don't really think any of these are that different than other sites. Maybe a place for everyone, because I know Airbnb has had problems with people discriminating when you're booking, but I think they've done a lot of stuff to combat that over the years. How are they actually guaranteeing all that stuff? The descriptions are a little bit vague for me. Our book with confidence guarantee gives you 24 seven support. What does that mean necessarily? Versus I feel like with Sonder, they were a lot more explicit about what the app was. Basically, I don't really think these are actual differentiators. When you are doing category positioning and positioning yourself to go to other brands, you have to look at like what are the actual differentiators between like say you were a to-do list app. You wouldn't say like, oh, write down your to-dos, cross off your to-dos because those are not actual differentiators between your app and a piece of paper. What are the actual differentiators between your app and a piece of paper? Is it that you can see progress, you can keep your to-do list with you wherever you go? Like those are the differentiators. So I feel like all the privacy of home, enjoy full kitchens, laundry, pools, and yards, you can do that on any of these platforms. So you don't need to put this as like a functional benefit unless they're trying to differentiate themselves against hotels. In that case, that is different, but I don't know if that's who they actually need to differentiate themselves against, but maybe that is what they're doing. They're trying to get people who would normally book hotels and not people who would normally book Airbnbs. Actually, I think they are trying to do that because here in their description, they say VRBO connects homeowners with families and vacationers looking for something more than a hotel for their trip. They must be positioning themselves against hotels rather than against Airbnbs. Maybe because they've realized Airbnb is such like a massive giant it'd be too difficult to position themselves against them. If you go to their about, <laughs> everything is solved. Where families travel better together. So they've really narrowed in on that as a core persona, which I think is smart to get more niche. Our mission is to find every family the space they need to relax, reconnect, and enjoy precious time away together. We believe in family connection. We have a place for everyone. We want families to travel better together. That's coming through a lot more explicitly now. The things that I picked up from the homepage. If you had asked me before this video, I didn't realize that they were positioning themselves that way. They don't really have like a strong tone of voice. Off of their site, they didn't have like a lot of copy. It was a bit straight to the point. It was a little bit of corporate speak. Perks of a resort exclusively for you. The perfect greenhouse for your plant people. It's very like straight into the point. The summer camp you deserved. I guess that's part of their tone of voice is like very like straight into the point and like factual. I mean, it's cute, but I feel like if you're aiming towards families, I would love to see a brand take a bigger risk like that their brand personality is like that family member that's always trying to get everyone together, like your family member that hosts Thanksgiving. I think something like that gives a brand so much more to play with because they're doing all this positioning about bringing families together. Something like that would be so much more fun. There's a few other that I found when I was Googling because I really only knew Red Cottage, VRBO, Sonder when I thought off the top of my head. One mentioned Plum Guide, stay in the world's most remarkable homes. It looks like it's going for a little bit more of like a Mr. and Mrs. Smith like hotel vibe here. This is going for like higher end, no time for average stays. This is more like do your bucket list, big travel trip. Peace of mind guaranteed with ev every booking. I think that's quite smart because I'm not familiar with Plum Guide, maybe other people are. But when you maybe don't have as much brand awareness and you are doing homes, it's probably better to play up the safety aspect because I don't know whose homes these are. I've never heard of this site. Maybe this has better brand awareness elsewhere. Plum Promise, expert vetted homes, instant care, total reassurance. They're really playing up the security and safety, which I think is smart. Dream stays. So they have fun little names, hips don't lie, fairy world. 
the Ironmonger store. So those are quite playful names for the houses that you don't see elsewhere where it's a little more functional. These are pretty fun names, but I wouldn't say the copy elsewhere is like fun. This is a nice tone of voice. It's more friendly. In the very rare event your host cancels 48 hours after your booking, it sounds more human and conversational. I feel like the tone of voice could be more consistent. I want to click on one of these homes and see if the copy is fun there too. The tone of voice is like a little more playful than some of the other ones. They describe it and then they're like, think rustic beams, expose stone walls and design forward furniture. Lovely as the interior is, poolside is where it's at for us. It's definitely more playful than the other ones we've seen so far. You're England here but with this pool, who cares? It's like talking to kind of like a fun travel agent, more fun than the other travel agent that was it the other brand? This is a really fun section. Our highlights, the striking features and hidden details that caught our eye. Relax by your private pool with an ice cold beer. Eat together on the shady terrace with far reaching views. I really like this section because it's basically saying, this is why we chose this house. This is why we vetted it. This is why it's part of our collection. And it feels a lot more like they're including all the functional benefits of the house, but putting it, it more as you as the hero. So you can, similar to Sonder, you can picture yourself there. Similar to Sonder, they're playing up the place a bit more. They are selling the place just as much as the property. I always really like when there's more about the place. They have more curation with blog posts as well to explore nearby. It's really cool that this is all linked on the destination page versus just sitting in a blog somewhere that you have to go and find. Here again is some of the more fun, playful copy. Good to know, home truths, what the photos might not tell you, but we do. It's definitely more a little bit like, we vetted this, here's what we'll tell you. It's kind of playing up the trust and security in a fun way. If you go to their About Us, you get Curating the World's Best Rental Homes. I think that's where that copy is not in the fun tone of voice, but here it comes through a bit more. It's a quagmire. The standard is dispiriting. It has more personality. So I think it could just be more consistent. Here they're talking about accommodation reviews. Apparently Tom from Seattle loved everything about it, but Paulina from Milan thought the home was filthy and stank of stewage. Who is right? Who is wrong? Does Tom even exist? This is very fun and playful. So thank you internet for the quantity, but it's high time we turn the corner to quality. They're playing with a more fun tone of voice, but not in every part. I would, I would recommend a little bit more consistency, but I like what they're doing. Here they're positioning themselves against like restaurants have the Michelin star, books have the New York Times bestseller list, vacation homes have the plum guide. They're trying to position themselves as this authority that you can trust. I'm curious what persona they're targeting because a lot of the stuff says like the most remarkable homes, the world's best rental homes. This is really implying like high end luxury, but then the tone of voice is a bit more playful. I guess that's interesting because I like brands that have tensions, but I find it a little bit confusing. I think maybe if I saw the tone of voice come through more with like the world's most remarkable homes, best curated homes, the positioning would make a little bit more sense to me if that positioning was mixed with the brand personality a little bit more. Similar to Sonder, they also have a journal, which is their blog. It's funny, they're all called journals. <laughs> all travel Instagrams kind of look the same. That's always just trying to highlight the different bookings. Honestly, I think if you put a lot of these booking platforms side by side on Instagram and you didn't say who they were, it would be hard to tell. <laughs> they were which to me means they need to infuse a little more personality but it's probably addressing their business goals so who am i to say another one that looks quite similar to sonder is blue ground i've never heard of this one feel at home free to roam it's cute it rhymes experience the home that moves with you for a month a year or longer with a global network of designer furnished apartments it reads very sonder to me where maybe the homes all look kind of the same but they're all pretty nice it feels like you're staying in your own home they are going with the customers, the hero, speaking to the emotional value proposition, it just doesn't really stand out as that different from the others. You could really say that for any of these homestay sites. The future of living, peace of mind, to explore your latest adventure. It's very similar to Sonder. I would like to see Sonder and Blueground have different positioning. Streamlined tech experience, same thing as Sonder. They are playing up a little bit more long-term living, changing the way the world lives. Maybe they're trying to play up the digital nomad thing, maybe a little bit more. It's interesting they play that up more on the about. I feel like they could maybe play that up a little bit more on the homepage, distinguish themselves from these other sites. 
One that's a lot closer to what Airbnb was in the beginning is homestay, which is more about staying in people's homes and not so much like what Airbnb and these other places have become, which is like property management or people listing their investment properties and they don't actually live there. This definitely feels more homey. It feels less like high-end travel. They're showing these two women laughing together. It's more about like social connection, find your home away from home. Oh, this really drives me crazy because it is not sentence casing and it's not title casing. It's both. <laughs> so they need to have their copy editor fix that. Don't just visit it, live it. That's about connecting host families with students and independent travelers. So it's much more about that like backpacker living with a local. It's much more what Airbnb was in the beginning, kind of in between couch surfing and Airbnb. Monetize your spare room. This site looks a bit like Mm, 2014. I feel like it needs a refresh in design, but they aren't necessarily targeting this high-end consumer. They're more targeting backpacker students, and, and it does reflect that. But I would say if they had an updated design, it would increase the trust factor because you're staying in people's homes. And so nicer, more modern design does help with trust. If you go to their about, they're all about home sharing, wallet friendly prices. It's definitely different than these other sites that are targeting very high end budgets and luxury and curation and all of that. Oh, it's founded by a Hostel World co-founder. I'm not surprised by that. Yeah, found it in 2013. It I don't know if it's been updated, but the site looks very 2013 to me and like it could use a bit of a brand refresh. I love the mission as someone who worked in hostels and studied abroad. I think these types of sites are extremely important and are probably not the biggest money makers compared to the people going on a bachelorette party weekend who earn a lot of money. But I think these are very necessary. I used World Packers and some other sites that helped me work in hostels. I think we need sites like this. I just think they could use with like a bit of like a refresh for 2023. But I like that it isn't the same and I don't think it should be the same based on their positioning. Like it should be based more on this like human connection. I love all these photos of people. They look fun. Like it looks like real life <laughs> versus a photo shoot. I just think that sometimes when you come across these sites that were more based on the sharing economy now, it looks so outdated that you're like, oh, am I going to meet like normal people? This feels a little like too much like I'm pulling something off the bulletin board in the coffee shop, which is just not how I think young people go about things these days. So they probably rely a lot on social proof and word of mouth, I would imagine. Also this header image, what is this? A park that doesn't capture the brand at all. It should be these lovely ladies that were on the homepage, like connecting and laughing and having this shared social experience. I would also say maybe invest in, they probably have so many good photos from people who are doing this or like send a photographer to people who are doing this. You could get so many great real life moments of connection. You don't need to use these stock images on the about page. The Instagram looks like it's just being made on Canva. There's not really a cohesive brand identity. The visual identity looks quite different than what it looks like on the site. I think it really needs a brand refresh. That would be my recommendation. One more that's quite different than Airbnb, but similar business model is Hip Camp. I think this is a fun one to look at because this is about reserving RV spots and campsites. It's like Airbnb, but narrowed into that category. All these sites, they start with the search bar, right? But they have different value propositions, different hero copy, different hero images. This one says, find yourself outside. Again, speaking to the customer as the hero, which is great. Find yourself outside. I think it maybe be like, well, I guess it has a double meaning because it's like find yourself, like people go into nature to find themselves, but it's also like finding a location. So actually I think that copy is pretty good. Their colors are very natural. It looks very outdoorsy, this green and this like terracotta orange. Camp out under the stars, new tools to find yourself outside. It's all about getting outside to these camping sites or glamping sites. Hip camp is the simplest way to find yourself outside. I don't think they need to repeat that copy. I would maybe use that space to do something else. Their benefits listed are unlock new access to unexpected places, discover unique outdoor experiences, protect our wild places. I think those are great. Those are very different than the other sites we looked at. They're not saying find a place to go for the weekend, hang out with your friends, because all of those things are what you would be doing on any of these sites. I like that they're positioning themselves against the alternatives. It's 
its actual differentiators from the rest of the category. Even the categories here, beach days, camping near hot springs, lake camping, it's very with niche within its category, which is cool, alongside the, the typical locations. So again, on the about, find yourself outside. I don't know if I need to like repeat that on every page, but I guess they really want to hammer it in. The values, embrace the adventure, move with purposeful urgency, build resilient communities, leave it better. These are great because they feel very specific to hip camp. It doesn't feel like any company could just have these. They also have a journal. <laughs> Come on guys, we can come up with a different name for a blog than journal. <laughs> this is cool, they have a YouTube. Most of these places I don't think have a YouTube or at least they weren't linked on their site. Their Instagram definitely has a unique identity. Nature, camping, getting outdoors, it feels very different than the other Instagrams. That was fun, I feel like I learned something because in my mind I thought all of these alternatives to Airbnb were the same thing but actually they're positioned quite differently. You have VRBO who's more positioned to get for families which I didn't realize before. You have Sonder and Blue Ground kind of in a similar camp of a long term stay in between hotel and Airbnb. You have Hip Camp which is towards outdoors. It was quite interesting to to see how they're subtly positioning themselves but I would like to see some stronger tones of voice stronger brand personalities I don't know if they're trying to appeal to a wide range of people so they've like dulled down some of their voices I really liked Homestay's concept I would like th to see them do a brand refresh and modernize a bit I think that could be fun let me know what you thought if you know of any others like these which one was your favorite have you used any of these and thanks for tuning in